Okay, so um, we're in 11.8, 11 11 5.8, and we're going over find the area of this triangle in terms of sine A. So whenever they're asking you to find something in terms of sine A, they're just asking you that the answer would have sine A somewhere in the answer. So yesterday we had talked, or not yesterday, yeah, actually yesterday we had talked about um, a bunch of formulas that you can use to find the area of a triangle that doesn't give you the height, right? So the very first thing I'm going to, I'm just going to review this really, really quick. All I do is I draw an altitude in, which is also called the height of the triangle. And if you remember, the area of a triangle is equal to half times base times height. Conveniently in this example here, if you notice, right, um, this base is actually the base that I'm going to use. Yes. And then so here, um, this B is this B. So that's great. So I'm halfway there. Um, and then this height is going to be this height. Now, I would be finished if they said find the area of this triangle. I'd be done. But they said in terms of sine A, right? So now I've got to like somehow put sine A in here. So then I look at what sine A is and I'm like, oh, sine A is going to help me. So I asked you guys if you can write um, an equation with sine A. So you wrote an equation. Very good. Sine A is equal to what? Yeah, for Sokotoa. Mm -hmm. What is sine of A equal to in this triangle? Very good. It's H over B. Oh, sorry, not B. It's H over C, right? So opposite over hypotenuse, which would be C in this case, right? That makes sense. And then so what I want to do right now is I want to solve for H because if you look at this equation and this equation, the thing they have in common is an H. So I'm going to multiply both sides by C so then I can substitute into this equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides by C. Again, we always put coefficients all the way out in front, right? So H is equal to C sine A. H is equal to C sine A. Okay, so let me let that catch up really quick. Okay, so then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this C sine A and plug it in instead of H, right? This is classic substitution. So I'm going to keep my A, I'm going to keep my equals to, I'm going to keep my half, I'm going to keep my B, but instead of that H, I'm going to write what H is equal to, right? So classic Miss Johnson example is, hey, on my sandwich, instead of putting bacon on it, can you please put avocado instead? And so they're like, sure, no problem. So A stays the same, equal stays the same, half stays the same. B stays the same. Everybody stays the same except for that H. And I'm exchanging it for um, C sine A. Okay. So you're going to see here in a second, A is equal to half B C sine A. And I gave you a couple tips to remember this formula. Notice that we're using the two sides, B and C with the angle in between sine A, right? If you were to do this any other way, you can always rewrite it, but it's the same exact thing. So what we did here, if you want, if I wanted to explain each step, first I started with the area of a triangle formula. Then I, um, <clears throat> I, I, drew, I drew an altitude, called it H. I found the sine of A, and then I substituted and there's my answer. Okay. So you can actually rewrite these, this equation a bunch of different times. So instead of writing that, you could also write half of a B sine C. Notice that every single time when you write this, you use two letters, you use two of the sides 
and you use the included angle. And then the last equation is half of AC sine B. Do you have to memorize these equations? No. Do you have to understand them? Yeah, it'd be great for you to understand because no matter what I give you, like down here, like we're about to do numbers six and eight, I think. Let me see here for a second. Um, we're gonna do, we're gonna try problems six and eight. It doesn't really matter which one you give me. I can use any of these to use it. Okay, so that's problem number five done. Okay, so here's your answer. Okay, number six says C equals to 84.5, A is 32, and B is 40. Um, find the area of the triangle. Okay, so here you're going to be selective on which formula you should use. I'll call this formula one, two, or three. For number six, which one would you use? For number six, which one would you use for number six? One, formula one, formula two, or formula three? Yeah, I'd use formula two as well. Very good. Now, the biggest indicator is because which angle did they give me? So since they gave me big C, then I'm going to use this one. So I'm just going to literally plug everything in here. So it says A equals half of A, B, sine C. So now I'm just going to plug everybody in here. So that's half times A, which is 32, times B, which is 40, times sine of 84.5. And so that's going to be an approximate. So I'm going to bring my handed down to calculator. Where are you? Here you are. Um, and then I'm just going to plug everybody in. Okay, so here I go. It's one half times 32 times 40 sine 84.5. Ms. Johnson, don't forget to check your degrees. Done. So notice, I don't know if you saw, but it did change the number because it was on radians. So I think this is about 637.05 units squared. So units squared just means tiny little post-its. I'm going to take 637.05 tiny little post-its and I'm going to cover this whole thing. Okay. So I did number six. You're going to try number eight. You're going to try number eight. And then you're going to give me a final answer. Okay, so I'm going to pause it so that you guys have time to catch up. All right, so for number eight, which one did you use? Formula one, two, or three? Which one did you choose? Yeah, I did two. Good job. So um, someone said in the chat, I chose three. I did two. The biggest indicator for me is going to be which big letter they gave you or which angle they gave me. Since they gave me big B, I look for big B and I use that one. That's it. So then I'm just going to plug this in. So I get half of A, which is 105 times C, which is 64 sine of B, which is 72.5 degrees. And then I just plug everything in. So I'm literally going, I'm going to be a little bit on the lazy side here. I'm, I already have my formula. So I'm going to change this for 105. I'm going to change this for 64. And then I'm going to change this to 72.5. And then I'm going to verify, let's see, um, 105, 64, 72.5, sign, perfect. I already checked if I was in degrees. So 3,204.49. 3,204.49 units squared. So Ms. Johnson, are you going to mark us off if you if we don't put units squared like you did here? Um, not necessarily, but um, that number isn't just a number, right? That number is representing um, an area. So when I see this, this is telling me, oh, you're talking about area, right? So it's very clear to me, to you, to everybody that you're talking about area. So I wouldn't neglect this. Um, just make sure that you completely understand it.
Okay, so there's your answer, 3,204.49 uh, 49 units squared. How do we check if we're in degrees? So over here in the little settings, and you scroll all the way down, it should be highlighted. Degrees should be highlighted. If you're using um, like just a regular calculator like this, it should say DEG in the corner somewhere on the screen. It'll say DEG. And if you want to toggle it back, like let's say it says RAD, then you toggle it until you get it to say um, DEG. Okay, very good. And then again, um, how would you check this answer, Ms. Johnson? Um, let's see, how would I check this answer? Hmm. So one way to check it is actually finding age, but that's actually the same way, not a different way. Um, yeah, hmm. I'd have to think about that. One. Um, I would just make sure that I'm, I'm using the right formula. Okay, very good.